Hi, welcome to another LaTeX tutorial. Today we're going to talk about how to create a Beamer presentation. So this will be something similar to a PowerPoint presentation or a keynote presentation where you're creating slides that you're going to advance through. The nice thing about using Beamer is that your output is going to be a PDF document and that can travel with you anywhere. You can open it on any device and you can have many of the same features that those other presentation software programs give you. So let's just click through our slides so you can see what it is we're creating today. I've got my title slide here. I have a definition, so I, I created like a call out box here. And I'm going to show you how to hide certain things on your slide or make certain things appear. So here I have the answers to that previous slide are appearing. We're also going to talk about how you can format your slides using columns. And again, making different elements appear or disappear changing the transparency of items as you click through your presentation. So let's get started. I've opened my text editor and for this tutorial I'm using TechMaker. So the first thing I want to do is create a new file and then I want to save that file. I won't be able to compile until I've named and saved my file. We don't want to use spaces in our file names so I'm going to call it Beamer-Tutorial. The first command will be backslash document class and then in curly brackets beamer. Then backslash begin document and when we begin a document we also need backslash end document. In beamer we create frames to hold all of our information. A frame can contain a single slide in your slide presentation or it can actually contain multiple slides. So I'm going to create a frame using backslash begin frame and of course when you have begin frame you need a matching backslash end frame. Inside of those two commands I'm going to type some content. For now just the word hello. Let's compile and see what we get. To compile, I'm going to use the Run button to the left of Quick Build, or you can use F1 on your keyboard. So as expected, I have a single slide in this frame, and it just has the word Hello on it. Notice that it will automatically center that text vertically on the slide. But to begin my presentation, I want a title slide, so I'm going to back up a little bit. I'm going to go back into my preamble and I'm going to enter some information that is going to be on my title page. So we start with backslash title and then on the next line backslash author and I'll just enter my name Michelle Crummel then backslash institute and you can type the name of your institution or whatever organization you're affiliated with. And then backslash date. Now for the date, you can type in the date that you want. You can use backslash today to get today's date. I'm just going to leave it blank because I don't want the date to appear on my title page. If I compile right now, we don't see anything different because I haven't actually given the command to create the title page. I'm going to do that in a new frame right under begin document. So backslash begin frame and then within that frame backslash title page. And Now compile and I have my title page and if I scroll down I have my next slide which just says hello. There are different themes that you can use to visually make your Beamer presentation look nicer. And we're going to go into the preamble to define which theme we want to use. So under my document class, I'm going to type backslash use theme and then in curly brackets, the name of the theme that I want to use. So this is a predetermined theme called Warsaw. And I'm going to build and it changes my formatting. On the bottom of each slide, whatever you entered in the author command is going to show up here on the left. 
And then on the right, we have our title. Now there's a couple of things we can do with this title. If your title is really long, you might not want the whole thing to appear down here. So I'm going to go back where I defined my title, backslash title, and before my curly brackets, I'm going to enter a pair of square brackets and call that subtitle. It's not really a subtitle. Maybe I should call it short title. And I will compile that. And now you can see down here on the right, I have my abbreviated title. So you can change that text and have it be different from the text that is up here. Now if you do want to add a subtitle, we can. Under the backslash title command, I can do backslash subtitle, and then in curly brackets, put my subtitle here. And then it will show up as a subtitle along with my main title. But it will not show up in this area down here where we have our short, shortened title. If you search the internet for Beamer themes, you'll find many other themes that you can use here instead of Warsaw. So here's one, for example, that has the name of the theme in that first column here. And if I scroll down, we'll eventually get to the Warsaw theme. So here's the Warsaw theme that I showed you. And you can click on it and see an example and scroll through a couple of slides to see what that theme is going to look like. We can also stick with the Warsaw theme and change the color scheme. So there are a number of predefined color schemes that work with this presentation. If I enter backslash use color theme and then in curly brackets the name of the theme. So for example one color theme is named Crane. And if I try that and compile, it's going to change the colors used in my presentation. So again, if you search for that online, Beamer themes, Beamer color themes, you'll see a variety of different choices. We can also define our own colors. So let's say I want to use the color green because my school colors are green. I'm going to enter backslash define color and then in curly brackets I'm going to create a name for my color and I'm just going to call it my green. And then I have to define what color it is so I'm going to do that using RGB. In another pair of curly brackets lowercase RGB and curly bracket and then in another pair of curly brackets 0.125 comma 0.5 comma 0.25 and then instead of using the color theme crane this is called structure the color theme I'm using is called stru structure and in square brackets in front of structure I'm going to enter named equals my green, the color of my color. And let's compile that. And so now I have a custom color theme. LaTeXColor.com is a great site to find examples of different colors you can use and their RGB codes. So if we want to use this shade of awesome, here's the code right here with the RGB values. I think I'm going to stick with my green. I have my title slide. Let's go down and work on our first content slide a little bit. I have the command backslash begin frame. Now if I want to add a title to this slide, after backslash begin frame, in curly brackets, I'm just going to enter the title name of the slide. And so for this particular theme, it's going to put a colored background behind the title name of my slide. Now we can add all kinds of content to our slide. If we want to add a list, we just type the LaTeX code that we know for lists, backslash begin, enumerate, slash item for the first item in my list. 
This is item number one, backslash item. This is item number two. Let's compile that. Okay. Now, by default, it's going to place the content in the middle of the slide, vertically, but left aligned. If we don't want that, I can go in between begin frame and the title name of my slide, and in square brackets, I'm going to put a lowercase t for top, and that is going to align the text at the top instead of in the middle. Okay, so here it is now up at the top, and as I add new content, it'll just fill in below. If it's too far to the top, I can come to the end of the title and enter backslash v space to put in a vertical space, and maybe I want 10 point. I'll compile that, and it's going to give me some more vertical spacing at the top here if I feel like it's too crowded at the top. Now one thing I love about using TechMaker is that I can create my own macros because this is something that I do over and over and over again when I'm creating a Beamer presentation. I begin a new frame and, and end the frame, I align it at the top, I insert my title name, I add a little bit of vertical spacing, so instead of having to type that over each time, I have a macro for that and I have a hotkey for that, so I'm just going to hit my F6 and it's immediately going to enter this and I'm ready to customize it. If I hit F1 to compile, we can see there was my last frame, here's my new frame that I just created and it's all ready to go, the formatting wise. If you missed the video where I talked about how to create macros, I'll just really quickly show you. Here in TechMaker, you would go under User, User Tags, Edit User Tags, and then you have 10 different slots where you can create your macros. So the one I was just using is under menu 6, and so that's hotkeyed to F6 on my keyboard. And this is, if I want to create a new Beamer slide, it's very quick and easy to do. Now I'm going to go back and show you the formatting that I actually use. I don't use the Warsaw theme when I create my presentations. I use a theme called Metropolis, so it has some unique customization settings that I like. So I'm going to go back and change, instead of use theme Warsaw, use theme Metropolis, all lowercase. Now in front of the Metropolis, in square brackets, I'm going to add a progress bar. Progress bar equals frame title. So this is going to give me a visual progress bar, so while I'm going through my presentation, I can see about how far into my presentation I am, how far I still have left to go. It's a nice visual reminder. Now there are a few other things that I need to do here in order to use this theme. I'm going to set up a counter in the lower right hand corner of my slides and it's going to also show me numerically how far through my presentation I am. So to do that, backslash set beamer template in curly brackets, frame numbering with a space in between, and then another pair of curly brackets, fraction. Okay, then backslash use outer theme metropolis backslash use inner theme curly brackets metropolis backslash use font theme curly back brackets metropolis and backslash use color theme curly brackets spruce that's going to give me a nice shade of green instead of using my customized my green. Okay, then I think we need one more backslash set beamer color curly brackets background space canvas and curly brackets and then curly brackets BG for background equals white. I want to make sure I have a white background. Now let's compile and see what we get. Okay, so here is my new theme. 
I still have my title page. It visually, it looks a little bit different. And it should not say fraction there, so I did something wrong there. Oh, I see. This is supposed to be square brackets around the word fraction. So let's fix that. And recompile. OK, there we go. So here is the progress bar I was telling you about. So it's dark green. I'm on slide two of three right now, so it has darkened two thirds of the way to the edge. And then I also have my frame numbers in the lower right hand corner, and I set them up to display as fractions. So it'll look like two out of three slides. And then my last slide, three out of three, that progress bar has gone all the way to the edge. And then my counter down here, three out of three. I like this theme, as I said, because when I'm teaching, I can see how much farther I have to go. So let's make this look like a real presentation. I'm going to change the information on my title slide. I'm going to do away with my short title, because in this particular theme, it doesn't display a short title. So I'm changing my title to Functions, Limits, Derivatives. I have no subtitle, so I'm just going to comment that line out using a percent symbol. And for Institute, since I teach every day and I'm doing these presentations every day, I don't feel the need to tell my students the institute to which I belong. They know that already. So I use the Institute command as a place to enter my learning outcomes. And for this particular example, we are talking about functions. And I also don't feel the need to have my name displayed since I'm teaching my students every day of the school year. They know my name. I don't want to display that, but we can't just comment that one out or it's going to mess up the theme. So what I'm going to do instead is leave it blank. And I want to kind of emphasize learning outcomes. And so I'm going to highlight that. And in TechMaker, we can quickly make something bold with this little B over here. Or if you're doing that by hand, it's backslash text BF, and then in curly brackets, the text that you want to make bold. So that's looking a little better, but I still want to emphasize learning outcomes. So I'm going to change the size of just that text. And I'm going to do backslash large. In fact, I probably want to make it all a little bit larger. So just that backslash large will increase the text size. Now, if I want that on a separate line after learning outcomes and before the word identify, I'm going to do a double backslash to break the line. And then I'm going to add some spacing. So in square brackets, let's do six point. Okay, I'm pleased with that. I'm going to delete this frame that I created that really doesn't have anything meaningful on it. And go back to this blank frame now. So let me recompile. We'll see what we have. I've got my title slide. And I've got just this frame here. Now a note about the frame numbering. Obviously I only have two slides and it looks like I have three. Sometimes you have to hit compile twice to recalibrate the page numbering. So if I compile again, now it'll be accurate. Now I'm on slide two out of two. For this slide, I'm going to add a title and I'll just call it functions. And here I want to enter the definition of a function. So I'm going to use the block command to do this. Now I have a macro set up for this because this is something that I use quite often. So on my keyboard, if I just hit F9, it's going to enter this code for me. So what I need is backslash begin and then in curly brackets block. And then in the other set of curly brackets, the title. So I can say definition of a function. And then I like to add a little bit of vertical spacing before I enter my text. So backslash V space 0.5 EM. So EM is one of the units of measurement you can use. You could also, I might also do four point 
if I didn't want to use the EM. And here I'm just going to put in the definition of a function. And I will compile that. So a function f is a rule that assigns to each element x in a set d exactly one element called f of x in a set e. Now visually I want that to stand out a little bit more. So with this particular theme I can go back right under begin document and add the command backslash metro set and then in curly brackets block equals fill. And let me compile again. Okay, so that is going to put my block visually in a color box. Now still on that same slide, below that, again I'm going to add some vertical space, so backslash vspace, 10 point, and I'm going to put two questions up here, and I want them to come up with the words domain and range. So I'm going to say set D is called the, and I don't want to give it away, so I want to put a blank here. So I'm going to do backslash, line, and in parentheses, one comma zero, close my parentheses, and then in curly brackets, the length of the line. So let's try 50, and I can make that longer or shorter if needed. So set D is called the, and that'll give me a blank, of the function. Okay, I'm happy with the length of the line, although um, it didn't put a space in between the end of the blank and the word of. I can force a space there if I do backslash comma. Okay, that looks better. And then I also want to do something similar for range, so I'm going to end the line there and insert 10 points of space and set E is called the, and I'll do the same thing, now if we want to insert the answer, so let's say you want your students to be able to go back through this presentation later and check their answers as they go, we can do that, I'm not going to create a whole new slide with the answer in it, it would be far more efficient if I could just ask LaTeX to not display the answer until I move forward to the next slide. Okay, So I'm going to insert some um, breaks in the code here just to uh, make the work more organized so you can see what's happening. Now remember just because I hit return in my code doesn't mean that it's going to create a line break in my output document. So let me compile and see that I haven't actually changed the output. Okay, I've just changed the way the text in the code is spaced. Okay, so I'm going to also break here just so you can see where it is I'm trying to make a change. And again, I haven't changed the output whatsoever. So where I have line, the, the, the line with the length of 50, I want to display that on the first slide, but I want to replace that with something different on the next slide. So the way I'm going to do that, in front of that command, I'm going to type backslash only, and then the left angular bracket, one. So this is, this is going to only display this on slide number one within this frame. And then the right angular bracket, I'll close that. And then curly brackets around the content that I only want shown on slide one. Now there is only one slide in this frame. So right now that shouldn't do anything visually to my output. It didn't change anything. I've got my title slide and then I have this slide. Because there is only one slide in this frame. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tell it something else that I want it to display on slide 2 and only on slide 2. So backslash only and now in the angular brackets I'm going to put 
2 for slide number 2, and then in curly brackets, that content. So on slide 2, I want it to show the answer, and the answer is domain. So now when I compile, I have my title slide, and then here I have my blank line. This is the first slide in this frame, and then if I scroll down, I have another slide, and it replaced the blank with the word domain. Now I have all this extra spacing because I shouldn't have added space before and after the word domain. So let me delete that. And then I also want to make this stand out more, so I'm going to change the color. I could make it bold if I wanted to make it bold, but I'm going to change the color. So in front of the word domain, but still within those curly brackets, because I just want this to apply to slide two, I'm going to hit type backslash text color and then in curly brackets magenta and then in another pair of curly brackets the text that I want to display as that color. So let's try that. I may need the color package. Let's see if this works. That did work. Okay, so set D is called the domain of the function and as we go through the presentation then when I click forward to this slide it'll show me that as an answer. So I'm going to do something very similar to domains. Let me just copy and paste and change that domain to range. Alright, so backing up, here's my title slide and then I would click forward to this slide to show my students, give them an opportunity to come up with those words domain and range and then we can go forward again and they'll see the answers on this slide. Now notice the frame number didn't change and I said sometimes you have to compile more than once. If I compile again that's still not going to change because I didn't create a new frame. This counter in the lower right hand corner is only counting my frames. It's not counting my slides and there is a difference between slides and frames. One frame, think of a frame as a container, can hold many slides. And so I created two slides within this one frame. Next I want to show you how you can arrange information if maybe you want text on the left side of your slide and you want to insert an image on the right side of your slide. So we can use set up columns to do that. I'm going to create a new frame after my last frame. So backslash begin frame and I'm going to align the content at the top, so in square brackets T, and then in curly brackets the title. And I'm going to call this one your very first flash card. Because we're going to be talking about something on this slide that is very important that students forget over and over and over again. So I want to go over this on day one and make sure they understand it. So we, they will be seeing it a lot. I'm going to start by trying to trick them into giving me the wrong answer. And let's do the square root of x squared equals. Okay, so here is my new slide and I want them to tell me what is the square root of x squared. And I'm going to give them some answers to choose from. So let me end the line. backslash begin enumerate and the first answer choice will be x and then we'll do opposite of x absolute value of x or undefined now I don't like the 1 2 3 4 I would rather have the choices be a b c d so I'm going to change that. I'm going to go to the end of begin enumerate and in square brackets I'm going to type what I want to see displayed instead of those numbers. So I want in parentheses to see capital letter A and then close parentheses. Right, and now it's giving me answer choices A, B, C, D. Now this still looks a little bit awkward to me. I think I need more space at the top of the slide. Oh, I didn't add in any extra vertical space at the top of the slide. Or what I could do is take out this T that is a top aligning it and see if I like that better. Okay, 
Now, and now it's, I feel like it's too much space. So I'll put the T back in and I'm just going to add some vertical space here at the end. Let's go with 10 point. Okay, I am happy with that. Now what usually happens when I ask students this question is they choose answer A. And if I have a funny look on my face, then sometimes they say, well, plus or minus. And I ask them, is it plus or is it minus? And sometimes that sparks some good mathematical discussion. Sometimes I have to encourage them to graph it and see what the graph of this is going to look like. So I don't want to give it away right in the beginning. So let's say I want to add a graph, but I don't want it to show up right away on this slide because I want to give them the chance to make the wrong choice and then think about it. So I showed you already how we can hide something and have it appear later. I'm going to do that with the graph. But if I just enter the graph, it's going to show up underneath the word undefined. And that's not what I want. I want it to show up on the right hand side of the slide. So I want to create two columns within this frame. Now it's easier to create columns if you do it before you've added any content, but we can still work around that. Actually, I think I'm just going to start over because it really is easier to set up the columns before you start entering the text. So I'm going to copy this, paste it, take out the content, okay. and now I'm ready to set up my columns. So I start with backslash begin columns in curly brackets, and then right after columns in square brackets, only text width. That's going to help with alignment. I always use that. And then I can create how many, however many columns I want just by doing backslash column and then defining the width of the column. So typically I want a 50-50 split. So I'm going to do 0 0.5 backslash text width. And then I'm going to type that again to get another column. So now this, sh this should give me two columns, but I don't actually have any content. Let me just type some X's here see what we get. Oh, I did begin columns, but I failed to end the columns. So I'm going to do backslash end columns and try again. Okay, so now we have two columns and the content in each column is left aligned. So now I'm going to go back and copy paste my content. On the left, I have my question and my answer choices. On the, in the right-hand column, I want to enter the graph. Okay, I need to physically paste the image that I want to use inside the folder that contains my tech file. So my image is called x squared.png, and I've just copied and pasted it into that folder where I have this tech file saved. So now I'm going to enter the code to insert my image. And there's the graph on the right hand side. Now I would also like to come up with an equation for this graph. And I'm going to place the equation above the graph. Now to write the equation, this is going to be a piecewise defined function. So square root of x squared is equal to, and to create the piecewise equation, I'm going to use backslash begin cases. So the first branch, the equation will be negative x comma ampersand, because now I'm going to define that subdomain, x less than zero. End the line. The right-hand branch, the equation is x, comma ampersand, and then the subdomain there, x greater than or equal to zero. And then backslash end cases.
Then I want a line break and a little bit of space between the equation and the graph. And I mistyped that period should be an x. There we go. So let's review what we have of my title slide and then my definition of a function. I have the answers displayed on the following slide. And then this was my first attempt at creating this slide. I'm going to go ahead and delete this frame and let's try that again. So I have my title slide, definition of a function, the answers, and then finally I have this slide. So I don't want this all displayed at once. And I also want to change the horizontal spacing. So I have too much space in between those answer choices and the graph. It looks a little bit awkward. So to do that, I'm going to change the column width. The first column does not need to be so wide. So I'm going to change it from 0.5 to 0.4, 40% of the text width. And then I'm going to increase the other one to 0.6. Now on the first slide, I just want to see what's in my left hand column. So I'm going to go to the code for my right hand column and backslash only. Now I actually, on the first slide, I want to see what's in the left hand column. On the second slide, I want to see the graph. And then I want to see if the students can come up with the equation themselves. So on the third slide, I want to show the equation. So this is going to be only on slide three in curly brackets, and then I will close the curly brackets after the content that I only want to appear on slide three. The graph, I'm going to do only. Now the graph, I want it to show up on slide two and on slide three. So I'm going to do two and then a hyphen, and that's going to mean display this on slide two and everything after slide two, but still only within this frame curly brackets and then I'll end that extra curly bracket after the image. So I should see three slides in this frame. I'm going to compile twice to make sure my numbering is correct. Let's go back to the beginning. Title slide, definition of a function, and the answer key there. And then I have just the equation and the answer choices. Then the graph is going to appear and finally all three things and I'm not completely happy with the vertical spacing here. So what I'm going to do is delete that top align and just let LaTeX center the content vertically. Okay, so this would be in this one frame, slide one, slide two, that looks much nicer, and then slide three. Okay, just a couple more things to show you. Let's create a new frame So I'm going to use my hotkey that I've set up, backslash begin frame, it's aligned vertically at the top. The title here is going to be parent functions. I've added a little bit of extra vertical spacing. And then my content, I'm going to create an enumerated list. So backslash begin enumerate backslash item, and then we'll enter all the items in the list. So I'm going to list all the basic parent functions that I want my students to know. And then let me also put some instructions at the top of the slide here. You should be able to identify by name and sketch a graph of each of the following parent functions. So let's see what we've got. That was a long list and it doesn't all fit on one slide. So there are a few things I can do here. First of all, I can get rid of the extra vertical space I have up at the top. That will help, but that's ultimately not how I'm going to fix this problem. So I'm going to leave it. I could also up at the top, change the font size. Right now it's just normal size. I could make it backslash small and see if everything will fit then. Still note. I can make it even smaller, or I can do backslash script size. And yes, I got everything to fit, 
but that's a lot of information and it's pretty small. It's going to be difficult to read and just a little bit too much visually. So instead, I want to go back to my normal size. So I'm going to delete that and I'm going to show this in three columns. Now I showed you an example of how you can use the column command to set up columns, but I'm going to show you something else you can do that's really helpful when you have an enumerated list because it'll automatically space out your items for you in case you want to come back and add or remove an item. You don't have to manually decide which column it's going to belong to. So to do that, we may have to add, a, add the uh, multi-calls package. Well, let me just try it without. Beamer sometimes includes these packages. So right after begin enumerate, I'm going to type backslash begin and then in curly brackets multi-calls with an S and then how many columns I want in another pair of curly brackets. So I want to try three columns and I have a begin multi calls so I need a matching end multi calls before my end enumerate. And let's see if this compiles without that package. No it does not. Okay so let's go up to our preamble backslash use package multi-call. Now this one does not have the S at the end. It's just multi-call. Let's go back down and see if that fixed our problem. And there we go. So I'm able to keep my large font size. Visually it breaks up all of that information and looks a lot nicer. It's still a, a lot to process at once so I'll show you how you can hide part of it. We've already talked about how you can hide part of it using the only command. Now I'll show you how you can hide some of your content using the on slide command. This works great if you have a bulleted list, but it'll work for us here too. Items one through five, I want to display right away on the first slide. So I'm going to find where that ends and then I'm going to hit instead of backslash only, backslash on slide. And then in my angular brackets, now the following content, I only want to show it on slide two. And I'm actually going to create three slides, so I want to show it on slides two and three. So I'm going to do the two and then the hyphen. Close that. Curly bracket. And then I want to close my brackets after y equals e to the x. So I find that, and then I want to close my brackets there. So let me compile and show you what that does. Now it looks like it's not there. It's just hidden, but it will show up on the next slide. So I'm going to do something similar here backslash on slide three we can do a hyphen just to be on the safe side open my curly brackets and then close the brackets after that section that I want to show it just on slide three now the difference between only and on slide only will actually remove the content on the slide where it's not supposed to be so it can affect the alignment of your objects on slide makes it invisible but it doesn't remove it and so it's still sort of in place and it's not going to change any of your spacing because it's there it's just invisible and you can change how invisible it is in other words you can change that level of transparency so let's go back up to the top in my preamble and let's put this right before begin document I'm going to type backslash set beamer covered and then in curly brackets transparent equals and I think the default is 15 let's start with 15 and see what that looks like so I'm going to go back down to this frame and compile okay so now we, we see like a ghost image of what's there if I used the only command I would not see this grayed out like this it would just be gone but with the on slide command it's just gonna make it transparent but it's still holding in place there and you can change the level of transparency so this I set to 15 percent and so you can see it what's nice about the transparency is oftentimes if you're giving the presentation and you're up close to the board you can see this 
and so you kind of know what you're talking what talking points are coming up next but a lot of times the kids who are sitting farther away or your audience who is sitting farther away can't see it and if it's still too dark and you think they are going to see it we can change that transparency setting i usually set it to five five i can just faintly see it but usually my audience cannot Okay, so now we can see that that is a lot lighter. So while you're giving your presentation, you'll click to your next slide and then it will be 100% visible. And then there's our third slide. So like I said, that's great to use if you have bullets that you're, you're presenting a lot of information on a slide and you wanna kind of break it up. And I'm gonna create one last frame. So backslash begin frame. And then after the frame in square brackets, stand out. And then let me just put some X's in there. It's a placeholder. And then you can see visually that very last slide is gonna, is gonna look a little bit different. So I will do, this is a good place to do, I'll do flush left. And then maybe I'll list their homework assignment. Page whatever, 342, numbers 7 through 21. Or it would be a good place to, you know, include references for your presentation or your contact information and so on. If you get an error um, trying to do this in another theme, it may not work with other themes. Okay, so we talked about the basics of setting up a Beamer presentation. We created a title slide, and we talked how, about how to change your theme, how to change your colors in your theme, how to create these blocks, and how to use the only and the on slide commands if you want to hide part of your content, how to set up different columns, and how to change your vertical spacing. I hope you found it helpful.